Sulawesi, formerly known as Celebes, is an island in Indonesia, one of the four greatest under islands, and the world's 11th largest island. It is situated between Borneo and the Maluku Islands. In Indonesia, only Sumatra, Borneo and Papua are larger in territory, and only Java and Sumatra have larger populations. Sulawesi comprises four peninsulas. The northern Minahasa Peninsula, the East Peninsula, the South Peninsula, and the Southeast Peninsula. Three gulfs separate these peninsulas. The Gulf of Tomini between northern Minahasa Peninsula and East Peninsula, the Tolo Gulf between East and Southeast Peninsula, and the Bone Gulf between the South and Southeast Peninsula. The Strait of Makassar runs along the western side of the island and separates the island from Borneo. Name the name Sulawesi possibly comes from the words Sula and Basi and may refer to the historical export of iron from the rich Lake Matano iron deposits. It came into common use in English following Indonesian independence. The name Celebes was originally given to the island by Portuguese explorers. Geology the island slopes up from the shores of the deep seas surrounding the island to a high, mostly non-volcanic, mountainous interior. Active volcanoes are found in the northern Minahasa Peninsula, stretching north to the Sangyihi Islands. The northern peninsula contains several active volcanoes such as Mount Lokan, Mount Awu, Sofitan and Karongtang, according to plate reconstructions. The island is believed to have been formed by the collision of Terranus from the Asian plate and from the Australian plate, with island arcs previously in the Pacific. Because of its several tectonic origin, faults scar the land, as a result, the island is prone to earthquakes. Sulawesi, in contrast to most of the other islands in the biogeographical region of Wallacea, is not truly oceanic but a composite island at the centre of the Asia-Australia collision zone. Parts of the island were formerly attached to either the Asian or Australian continental margin and became separated from these areas by vicariant processes. For one, in the west, the opening of the Makassar Strait separated West Sulawesi from Sunderland in the Eocene Sea, 45 Maya, in the east. The traditional view of collisions of multiple microcontinental fragments sliced from New Guinea with an active volcanic margin in West Sulawesi at different times since the early Miocene c. 20 Maya has recently been replaced by the hypothesis that extensional fragmentation has followed a single Miocene collision of West Sulawesi with the Sula Spur, the western end of an ancient folded belt of Ariscan origin in the late Paleozoic prehistory. Before October 2014, the settlement of South Sulawesi by modern humans had been dated to c. 30,000 BC on the basis of radiocarbon dates obtained from rock shelters in Morose. No earlier evidence of human occupation had at that point been found, but the island almost certainly formed part of the land bridge used for the settlement of Australia and New Guinea by at least 40,000 BCE. There is no evidence of Homo erectus having reached Sulawesi. Crude stone tools first discovered in 1947 on the right bank of the Waleni River at Beru, Indonesia, which were thought to date to the Pleistocene on the basis of their association with vertebrate fossils, are now thought to date to perhaps 50,000 BC. Following Peter Bellwood's model of a southward migration of Austronesian-speaking farmers, Radiocarbon dates from caves in Morose suggest a date in the mid-2nd millennium BC for the arrival of an a group from East Borneo speaking a proto-South Sulawesi language. Initial settlement was probably around the mouth of the Sudan River, on the northwest coast of the peninsula, although the south coast has also been suggested. Subsequent migrations across the mountainous landscape resulted in the geographical isolation of PSS speakers and the evolution of their languages into the eight families of the South Sulawesi language group. If each group can be said to have a homeland, that of the Bugus, today the most numerous group, was around Lakes Te Akut Mpe Akut and Sidane Rain in the Wall Depression.
Here for some 2,000 years lived the linguistic group that would become the modern Bugis. The archaic name of this group was UGIQ. Despite the fact that today they are closely linked with the Makassar, the closest linguistic neighbors of the Bugis are the Torijar. Pre-1200 Bugis society was most likely organized into chiefdoms. Some anthropologists have speculated these chiefdoms would have warden, in times of peace, exchanged women with each other. Further they have speculated that personal security would have been negligible, and head-hunting an established cultural practice. The political economy would have been a mixture of hunting and gathering and Sweden or shifting agriculture. Speculative planting of wet rice may have taken place along the margins of the lakes and rivers. In central Sulawesi there are over 400 granite megaliths, which various archaeological studies have dated to be from 3000 BC to AD 1300. They vary in size from a few centimeters to around 4.5 meters. The original purpose of the megaliths is unknown. About 30 of the megaliths represent human forms. Other megaliths are in form of large pots and stone plates. In October 2014 it was announced that cave paintings in Moros had been dated as being about 40,000 years old. Dr. Maxime Orbit, of Griffith University in Queensland, Australia, said that the minimum age for the outline of a hand was 39,900 years old, which made it the oldest hand stencil in the world, and added, next to it is a pig that has a minimum age of 35,400 years old. And this is one of the oldest figurative depictions in the world, if not the oldest one, history. Starting in the 13th century, access to prestige trade goods and to sources of iron started to alter long-standing cultural patterns, and to permit ambitious individuals to build larger political units. It is not known why these two ingredients appeared together, one was perhaps the product of the other. By 1400, a number of nascent agricultural principalities had arisen in the western Senrana Valley, as well as on the south coast and on the west coast near modern Perapere. The first Europeans to visit the island were the Portuguese sailors Simão de Abreu in 1523 and Gomes de Sequeira in 1525, sent from the Moluccas in search of gold, which the islands had the reputation of producing. A Portuguese base was installed in Macassar in the first decades of the 16th century, lasting until 1665, when it was taken by the Dutch. The Dutch had arrived in Sulawesi in 1605 and were quickly followed by the English, who established a factory in Makassar. From 1660, the Dutch were at war with Gower, the major Makassar West Coast power. In 1669, Admiral Spielman forced the ruler, Sultan Hassan Uddin, to sign the Treaty of Bongaya, which handed control of trade to the Dutch East India Company. The Dutch were aided in the conquest by the Bugis warlord Arung Palakar, ruler of the Bugis Kingdom of Bone. The Dutch built a fort at Ujung Pandang, while Arung Palakar became the regional overlord and Bone the dominant kingdom. Political and cultural development seems to have slowed as a result of the status quo. In 1905 the entire island became part of the Dutch state colony of the Netherlands East Indies until Japanese occupation in the Second World War. During the Indonesian National Revolution, the Dutch captain, Turk, Westerling led campaigns in which hundreds, maybe thousands died during the South Sulawesi campaign. Following the transfer of sovereignty in December 1949, Sulawesi became part of the Federal United States of Indonesia, which in 1950 became absorbed into the Unitary Republic of Indonesia. Central Sulawesi The Portuguese were rumored to have a fort in Perigi in 1555. The Kailai were an important group based in the Palu Valley and related to the Torijar. Scholars relate that their control swayed under Turner to Makassar, but this might have been a decision by the Dutch to give their vassals a chance to govern a difficult group. Padbrew commented that in the 1700s Kailai numbers were significant in a highly militant society.
In the 1850s a war erupted between the Kailai groups, including the Banawa, in which the Dutch decided to intervene. A complex conflict also involving the Sulu Island pirates and probably Wyndham. In the late 19th century the Saracens journeyed through the Palu Valley as part of a major initiative to bring the Kailai under Dutch rule. Some very surprising and interesting photographs were taken of shame and called Tajalakor. Further Christian religious missions entered the area to make one of the most detailed ethnographic studies in the early 20th century. A Swede by the name of Walter Cowden later studied much of the literature and produced a synthesis. Erskine Downs in the 1950s produced a summary of Kreutz and Andrianai's work. The religion of the Berer-speaking Torager of Central Celebes, which is invaluable for English-speaking researchers. One of the most recent publications is When the Bones Are Left, a study of the material culture of Central Sulawesi, offering extensive analysis. Also worthy of study is the brilliant works of Monig Atkinson on the Wana Shaman who live in the Mori area. Geography Sulawesi is the world's 11th largest island, covering an area of 174,600 square kilometers. The central part of the island is ruggedly mountainous, such that the island's peninsulas have traditionally been remote from each other, with better connections by sea than by road. The three bays that divide Sulawesi's peninsulas are, from north to south, the Tomini, the Tolo and the Boni. These separate the Minahasa or Northern Peninsula, the East Peninsula, the Southeast Peninsula and the South Peninsula. The Strait of Makassar runs along the western side of the island. The island is surrounded by Borneo to the west, by the Philippines to the north, by Maluku to the east, and by Flores and Timor to the south. Minor islands, the Saluyar Islands make up a peninsula stretching southwards from southwest Sulawesi into the Flora Sea administratively part of Sulawesi. The Sangyuhi Islands and Talord Islands stretch northward from the northeastern tip of Sulawesi, while Bhutan Island and its neighbors lie off its southeast peninsula. The Togian Islands are in the Gulf of Tomini and Peleng Island and Bangari Islands form a cluster between Sulawesi and Maluku. All the above-mentioned islands, and many smaller ones, are administratively part of Sulawesi's six provinces. Population The 2000 census population of the provinces of Sulawesi was 14,946,488, about 7.25% of Indonesia's total population. By the 2010 census the total had reached 17,371,782, and the latest official estimate is 18,455,058. The largest city is Makassar. Religion Islam is the majority religion in Sulawesi. The conversion of the lowlands of the southwestern peninsula to Islam occurred in the early 17th century. The Kingdom of Luwu in the Gulf of Bone was the first to accept Islam in February 1605. The Makassar Kingdom of Goa Talik, centered on the modern-day city of Makassar, followed suit in September. However, the Gorontalo and the Mongandao peoples of the northern peninsula largely converted to Islam only in the 19th century. Most Muslims are Sunnis. Christians form a substantial minority on the island. According to the demographer Toby Alice Volkman, 17% of Sulawesi's population is Protestant and less than 2% is Roman Catholic. Christians are concentrated on the tip of the northern peninsula around the city of Manado, which is inhabited by the Minahasa, a predominantly Protestant people, and the northernmost Sangha and Talord Islands. The famous Torajar people of Tana Torajar in central Sulawesi have largely converted to Christianity since Indonesia's independence. There are also substantial numbers of Christians around Lake Posa in central Sulawesi, among the Pamona-speaking peoples of central Sulawesi, and near Mamazar. Though most people identify themselves as Muslims or Christians, they often subscribe to local beliefs and deities as well. It is not uncommon for both groups to make offerings to local gods, goddesses and spirits. 
Smaller communities of Buddhists and Hindus are also found on Sulawesi, usually among the Chinese, Balinese and Indian communities. Administration The island is subdivided into six provinces. Garantalo, West Sulawesi, South Sulawesi, Central Sulawesi, Southeast Sulawesi and North Sulawesi. West Sulawesi is the newest province, created in 2004 from part of South Sulawesi. The largest cities on the island are Makassar, Manado, Palu, Kendari, Bitung, Garantalo, Palapo and Baobao, Flora and Fauna. Sulawesi is part of Wallacea, meaning that it has a mix of both Asian and Australasian species. There are eight national parks on the island, of which four are mostly marine. The parks with the largest terrestrial area are Bogani Nani Waterbone with 2,871 square kilometers and Law Lindu National Park with 2,290 square kilometers. Bunaken National Park which protects a rich coral ecosystem has been proposed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Mammals There are 127 known mammalian species in Sulawesi. A large percentage of these mammals, 62%, are endemic, meaning that they are found nowhere else in Indonesia or the world. The largest native mammals in Sulawesi are the two species of anna or dwarf buffalo. Other mammalian species inhabiting Sulawesi are the babirusas, which are aberrant pigs, the Sulawesi palm civet, and primates including a number of tarsiers and several species of macaque, including the crested black macaque, the moor macaque and the booted macaque. Although virtually all Sulawesi's mammals are placental, and generally have close relatives in Asia, several species of cuscus, marsupials of Australasian origin, are also present. Birds by contrast, Sulawesi and bird species tend to be found on other nearby islands as well, such as Borneo, 31% of Sulawesi's birds are found nowhere else. One endemic bird is the largely ground-dwelling, chicken-sized Malio, a megapode which uses hot sand close to the island's volcanic vents to incubate its eggs. There are around 350 known bird species in Sulawesi. An international partnership of conservationists, donors, and local people have formed the Alliance for Tompotika Conservation, in an effort to raise awareness and protect the nesting grounds of these birds on the central eastern arm of the island. Freshwater fishes Sulawesi also has several endemic species of freshwater fish, such as those in the genus No More Hamphis. A species flock of oviparous half-beaks containing 12 species that only are found on Sulawesi. In addition to no more hamphis, the majority of Sulawesi's 70-plus freshwater fish species are rice fishes, gobies and talnather and at sailfin silversides. The last family is almost entirely restricted to Sulawesi, especially the Malili Lake system, consisting of Matano and Touti, and the small Lonta, Mahalona and Masapi. The Gudgeon Bostrichus microphthalmus from the Morose cast is the only described species of cave-adapted fish from Sulawesi, but an apparently undescribed species from the same region and genus also exists. Freshwater crustaceans and snails There are many species of Caradina freshwater shrimp and Parathelphicide freshwater crabs that are endemic to Sulawesi. Several of these species have become very popular in the aquarium hobby, and since most are restricted to a single lake system, they are potentially vulnerable to habitat loss and overexploitation. There are also several endemic cave-adapted shrimp and crabs, especially in the morose cast. This includes Cancrisica xenomorpha, which has been called the most highly cave-adapted species of crab known in the world. The genus Tylomelania of freshwater snails is also endemic to Sulawesi, with the majority of the species restricted to Lake Possa and the Malili Lake system. Miscellaneous Mimic Octopus Conservation The island was recently the subject of an eco-regional conservation assessment coordinated by the Nature Conservancy. Detailed reports about the vegetation of the island are available. The assessment produced a detailed and annotated list of conservation portfolio sites. 
This information was widely distributed to local government agencies and non-governmental organizations. Detailed conservation priorities have also been outlined in a recent publication. The lowland forests on the island have mostly been removed. Because of the relative geological youth of the island and its dramatic and sharp topography, the lowland areas are naturally limited in their extent. The past decade has seen dramatic conversion of this rare and endangered habitat. The island also possesses one of the largest outcrops of serpentine soil in the world, which support an unusual and large community of specialized plant species. Environment the largest environmental issue in Sulawesi is deforestation. In 2007, scientists found that 80% of Sulawesi's forest had been lost or degraded, especially centered in the lowlands and the mangroves. Forests have been felled for logging and large agricultural projects. Loss of forest has resulted in many of Sulawesi's endemic species becoming endangered. In addition, 99% of Sulawesi's wetlands have been lost or damaged. Other environmental threats included bushmeat hunting and mining. Parks The island of Sulawesi has six national parks and 19 nature reserves. In addition, Sulawesi has three marine protected areas. Many of Sulawesi's parks are threatened by logging, mining, and deforestation for agriculture.